Well, Heather, there's an awful lot of news this past weekend for, for Europe, for the United States, and for the, for the rest of the world. Of course, one of the big things that uh, was the development uh, uh, that Vladimir Putin is indeed uh, most likely going to be the next president of the Russian Federation with getting the support of the current president, Dmitry Medvedev, at the United Russia Party Congress uh, a few, few days ago. Um, I, you know, I'm getting a lot of questions as to what, uh, what this means for U.S.-Russia relations, what this means for Rus Russian politics. My first answer is kind of, well, you know, it's not so much that Putin's returning. Uh, he never really left uh, while he's uh, been in the prime minister position for the last, the last four years. And de facto, uh, de jure power lies in the office of the, of the president. You know, I really, I've, I've always assumed that any significant decision on domestic policy or foreign policy was taken with the explicit or implicit support of Vladimir, Vladimir Putin. I think one of the biggest challenges for the Obama administration is, uh, is developing the personal relationship. Uh, that's what's, what's missing. Obama had a great relationship with Medvedev, and there's some things that, that uh, they've said uh, and done, and some things that come out through, through WikiLeaks which there's going to be some damage to repair there. But, uh, you know, I, I don't think that Mr. Uh, Mr. Putin is going to abandon the, the improvement of relations with the United States. There are important reasons for that. But how do you think this is being perceived in, uh, in Europe? Well, I think exactly uh, as President Obama spent a lot of his own personal time and political capital in building a strong relationship with President Medvedev, Angela Merkel and other European leaders did exactly the same. And they too have to work a little harder uh, after the uh, torch is passed uh, <laughs> to President uh, Putin uh, to reestablish those personal ties. I think uh, in many ways they looked at Medvedev and they, they saw a potential reformer, a next generation figure, and I think they, they invested in him because I think they felt that he could also perhaps uh, encourage reforms, whether that's economic reforms, even perhaps democratic reforms. So I think both Europe and the United States uh, are having to, going to have to do a little more work and a little more follow through and, uh, after this change occurs. I think European leaders were struck by the timing of this announcement. Not that we weren't anticipating that uh, this, uh, this announcement would happen, but over the weekend where Europe and European leaders were focused here in Washington during the World Bank IMF meetings, and then of course this uh, pretty, uh, pretty public spat with the former Prime Minister Kudrin really, I think, struck people uh, that there would be some changes, there could be some reshuffling of the elite, and I think uh, for all of those criminologists, uh, this, these are heady days because we're trying to figure out uh, what does this mean, uh, will it have an impact on, on future programs. Yeah, I was certainly struck by the timing as well, of course, and my first explanation was that, you know, uh, you know, the Russian markets tanked at the end of the last week, but as did most markets <laughs> in the world, but the Russian market lost about 15% of its, of its value. And I think maybe that was a, uh, the catalyst to, okay, we need to provide a greater degree of political certainty, so let's make this announcement right now. I don't know whether they, uh, perhaps they planned it, planned it, planned it earlier, but that was the first thought uh, for me. You know, Putin's got a, he's got quite a, quite a challenge. Um, you know, he could have rode off into the sunset uh, uh, and with a, a very, very uh, uh, strong legacy. Um, but it's kind of risky for him to come back as well because the challenges that Russia, Russia faces are not, are not insig insignificant. And uh, I don't think that uh, the, the reform, the agenda, the so-called modernization agenda uh, can be ignored. Um, Russia's, the, the, the drivers of Russian growth, uh, which propelled that growth from 1998 to 2008, those are, have been drying up. And uh, so I think he's going to have to return to that. And in fact, while he might have been regarded as Vladimir the stabilizer in the, the first uh, eight, or, eight or ten years, I think, you know, whether Russia really does need modernization and a modernizer, and that's going to be his biggest challenge, is can he be Vladimir the modernizer uh, in the years to come. The challenge for the next several years under as, as president will be riding a very rocky economy and we've been focusing a lot at the Europe program on the European sovereign debt crisis. This has pretty important implications for Russia and I think you're right. I think we have to be very cautious about how, uh, how Russian policy will work through these very difficult economic days. Well I recall what Foreign Minister Lavrov said uh, here in Washington in July right. when he spoke for uh, for us in the, the, the Russian embassy, and the introduction to his remarks was that the 
the United States, the Russian Federation, and Europe, the three uh, wings or branches of Western civiliza civilization, as you will, if, as he characterized it, need to work together and cooperate more in order for us to compete more effectively with the rest of the world. The biggest question the Russians probably have, especially about our relationship, is, you know, what's going to happen with the U.S. elections in, tw in 2012? Because I think that the, it has been the, the change in U.S. policy and, and approach to Russia that has been a big, um, uh, it's a big, been a big key to the success of the, uh, of, of the reset. And so the Russians are uh, pretty nervous about that as well. And heck, there are a lot of things to be nervous about in, 20, in 2012. <laughs> so I look forward to continue to talk to you about this, Heather. I think we'll have a lot to talk about yeah. in the weeks and the months to come. Thanks, Andy. Mm -hmm.